Welcome to Agile Roots 2010, sponsored by Version 1, Rally Software, Vario, Amirsis, Agile Alliance, and Xmission Internet. Why can't marketing just handle that branding junk? By Nate Jones and Dan Phillips. Dan, uh, we work for Skybend, and we work with people on branding, uh, helping them with their software brand, but also their company brand, and how those two interplay with each other. Um, kind of have form and function. Dan is a graphic designer, and uh, we work, work on brands from the largest down to the micro brands for one man bands and basements. Uh, yeah, so the great thing about my partner Nate is that uh, everything I design, he programs and develops. Nate has worked on large scale data-driven uh, applications, uh, again, all the way down to the simplest of WordPress uh, sites. So we, we get a chance to work together and uh, we create collaboration. And this is a, kind of a project we've been working on for the past few years. And uh, that's where we are today. So our title on, on the program was about uh, being a programmer and why can't marketing just take care of branding junk. Uh, we're not going to talk specifically about programmers. Programming. We're talking about anyone related to software and how branding can affect their daily lives. And then bring some of the techniques we're going to talk about into your planning processes and it'll help you enhance the brand of the company and the product as well as make a better experience for your users. Okay, so to start off, we're going to, we, we need some audience feedback today, so please don't get too comfortable. We want you guys to kind of help out here. I'm going to ask some questions. What, what is brand? When you hear brand, what, what do you think of it? I think about a name associated with some product. A name, okay. A reputation. Okay. A logo. A logo. A feeling. Okay. Anybody else? And so you're presented with something and you need to be able to identify with an organization or group or something. So it's associations. Okay. Symbolism. Symbolism. Experience. A little experience. Yes, so a symbol, either the one chosen by the company or one that you choose in your mind, that you feel represents that company organization. Okay. So I mean, I thought, you know, so for example, like George R. Bush, there are many symbols that we still didn't come up with, but, but people way, would have thought of as being. Thank you for pointing out. This is not a political statement. I typed in confused, and uh, <laughs> <laughs> this, is, this is the very first image that came back. So, so maybe uh, you could be the spokesperson. Maybe we're confused. Um, uh, anyway, there seems to be a, a, you guys have a, a lot of uh, great ideas as far as uh, uh, what brand is, and we're going to talk a little bit more about those. So some of the things I saw in here, you know, name, logo, uh, symbol, those are kind of the tangible items, and a lot of times people think about brand, they think about the tangible items, they think about marketing collateral. Okay. Collateral is, you know, don't get us wrong, it, it, this, is, this is the exact thing that everybody associates with brand, and this is where a lot of the, the problems come in. Uh, when we talk about brand. Um, you know, this, this is the Bahamas logo. I don't know how many of you have seen this, but as you can see, um, we have their, their getaway book, the pages, everything is using their logo. And by the way, this is their logo. It represents the Bahama Islands, and I think they've done a great job of uh, illustrating kind of their, their, their overall experience, kind of happy, bright colors. You can see the website. Everything is really, really continuous and very well uh, laid out and put together. So some of the things that we also have on the list, some of them didn't highlight, our reputation, feeling, association, and experience is they're kind of the, the intangible items. And so we want to talk a little bit more about the intangible items and kind of talk about how we move clients from thinking about the tangible logo, symbol, branding, marketing material to the intangible items. Okay. Now, our first step is we create a story. And I know this is probably sounds a lot like personas to, the, to this group. Um, however, when our client comes in, Nate and I have worked together long enough to know that when a client approaches us, they have a vision in their mind of what the end result looks like. Um, Nate and I have nicknamed this the movie. Somehow they have a movie, and the, every detail in that movie is planned out in their mind, and they don't realize it. And we know immediately when they realize it, when we show them something, like, no, that's not it. Well. 
their ability to identify no, that's not it means they know what it is. So we have to sit down and try to find this movie. And the way we do that is we ask questions. We ask a lot of questions. So we have this client that we, uh, we work with, and we're going to illustrate that right now. And uh, he was a poker, uh, poker client. He wanted to start a clothing line. He wanted to start poker tournaments. He wanted to start anything and everything to do with poker. So we sat down and we asked him, if, you're, if your brand were a movie, who's the main character? And uh, our client said, Brad Pitt. All right, and we, we took a minute there and took a look at it. Brad Pitt has been a lot of things. Uh, that doesn't help us uh, a great deal. Uh, you know, you could, you could pick any one of his movies and end up with a different story. So um, we asked further questions. Which character of Brad Pitt's did you, uh, did you most identify with or you think most identifies with your brand? So anybody know the movie that this is from? What? All right. Here, snatch. Snatch. Now our client said, "I want a badass." So we went through and we found badass Brad Pitt. Now this one is from Snatch, where he's a fighter. Uh, how about this one? Anybody? It's a little hard to see, but fairly recent. Inglorious Bastards. All right. It's a different kind of badass. And yet here's another brand of badass. Anybody know this movie? Okay. How about this one? Fight Club. So this is what we talked to our client about, and he says, well, it's none of those guys. We said, great, which character is it? Anybody want to take a guess which character? Troy. <laughs> Troy. <laughs> uh, no. Ocean's Eleven. This is Rusty from Ocean's Eleven. We said, great. Now, we watch the movie Rusty, actually watch it. Rusty, uh, he's a badass, but he's a cool, calm, collected badass. Okay? This guy, how many times have I said badass? Um, so, so Rusty here, he's got these shades. Uh, anybody else seen the movie Ocean's Eleven? All right, anybody, can you guys give me some words here on uh, Rusty, our, our main character here? Con man. He's a con man, okay. Smart. Smart. Swab. Smooth. Swab. Okay. These are the kinds of things that our client, who can't, for some reason, say smooth, suave, uh, these kind of, I mean, he can somehow point to this character and say, this is what embodies my brand. So, now that we have Rusty, it's hard to see, but this is a, a movie, uh, movie clip of Rusty in the movie uh, Ocean's Eleven. We have our guy. So now we ask the client, what kind of car does Rusty drive? In, in your movie, what, not necessarily in Ocean's Eleven, but in your movie, what kind of car does Rusty drive? Car says a lot about a man, right? So. So when he starts thinking about all these cars, he starts throwing them out, and he, he's, you know, so, so let's start with the obvious, a Pinto. I mean, is Rusty ever going to go on a Pinto? <laughs> all right. So, so we understand at that point, Rusty can only fit in so many automobiles, all right? And the one that our client chooses is, I, I believe, is the 69 convertible uh, Camaro. Now, Rusty fits in that car better than anybody I've ever seen fit in a car. I mean, this guy's now got attitude. The story is really starting to come together. So now we ask one last question, and we ask, what environment does Rusty live in? Anybody care to take a guess? It's pretty obvious at this point, anyway. Vegas, Vegas okay. Vegas, yeah. The casinos, and more specifically, where the lights are, where all the lights are bright. This is what our client tells us. So this, this kind of paints a really good picture of, of what our client has in his mind when we start talking about brand. And this goes into what Nate was talking about with the intangibles. None of these elements are related to logo yet. They're not related to brochures yet. They're not related to uh, any other object other than the idea that's going into the creation. So, in the end, this is the logo. Uh, it's still in the process, and it's still in the works, and we're still playing with it. But as you can see, uh, the company's name is Big Slick. Does anybody know what a Big Slick is in poker? No poker players? Okay. So. The big slick is a hand in Texas Hold'em, and it is the strongest starting hand. Uh, it is an ace and a king, and you can see in the logo we, we married those two together. Uh, and the big slick font there and the stuff, the stuff that we can dial in is all trying to match them. And the other stuff that we've done that can't really show at this point uh, kind of relates with Rusty and his whole personality. So, um, so reiterating some of the, the intangible items, um, some things that we didn't see, you know, we've got things like 
promise and trust and relation to reputations and ideas and uh, integrity and faith and belief. Those are things that we really try to get to when we're talking about brand. It's not just the, the logo. So um, some of the things is we learn to trust certain brands. And the only way that you can learn to trust a brand or have faith in a brand or learn that a brand has integrity is to experience that brand. You have to interact with that brand. Not the marketing material. You have to interact with the story. You have to experience that. And that's what we want to talk about, is push a little bit on the intangible parts of brand. So, pop quiz. What's the most loyal brand on the planet? Coca-Cola. No. no. <laughs> Good, though. Keep going. Marlboro. Please, feel free to say other things. Like, what was that? Apple. Apple's pretty good these days. Loyalty is what I'm talking about. To the death. Marlboro. Marlboro. <laughs> <laughs> Very good. Uh, over the years, people consider the most loyal brand to be Harley Davidson. This is the only time I get to use that effect because it fits. Yeah, we found it. Harley people are Harley people, and you can't convince them otherwise. And it's a culture, which is another word we didn't talk about with intangibles. It's people experience Harley Davidson. So let's take a little, little history walk through Harley Davidson. Uh, so this is some of the early stuff from Harley. And so you can see, going back to our badass word, this isn't quite there yet. We've got, it's kind of like skiing. You know, it's swift. And then here, it's fun. Okay? It's fun to be on Harley. And so this was Harley's first attempt at it. These are their ads. So they didn't quite have their story yet. So it's going to be refined over the years. So Hollywood thought they'd take a shot at it. So they gave us this little more tough Harley crowd. You got the leather now, and uh, you got the motorcycles, and they're living the life. They got their, their chick there with them. Is that an ascot or a scot? Yeah, so <laughs> they didn't quite get it yet, right? I don't know if he's pointing now. I don't know if he's pointing now. So then, this, at the time, this was kind of the reality, right? That was Hollywood's picture of it. This is the reality. It was a little bit hardcore already. You've got these kind of guys riding bikes, and uh, this guy got some loyalty already. And uh, this guy's really into it. Um, and so, the next one. Um, Hollywood thought they'd refine their story a little bit and give it a shot against. They wanted to romanticize this. It's about freedom. It's about... Uh, you know, life on the road. Um, anybody know this movie? It's easy, right? right. All right. Okay. One of these is an Indian, actually, I think. Go ahead. So then Harley came back and they said, ah, well, let's refine the message. We're tired of all the messages. So this is what Harley wants now. They went from skiing and fun over the years to that's the hardcore lifestyle right there. So and they continue that freedom. Oh, this is hard to read. This says, thou shalt not have any other gods before me. <laughs> so, Harley Davidson is putting out a very strong story of what they want you to experience with their brand. So, this is the bike is the man. Okay, these are actually parts of the motorcycle. So, this is part of the image. Is I just can't tell all these girls are pregnant. Uh, this is you know they're on the road in every town. You know, it's called Harley Davidson tour, leaving their mark, I guess. But. You know, but, but <laughs> So this is probably where we've settled these days. So you've got your 30 to 50 year old guys and, and ladies, you know, out for a weekend ride. And what's interesting about this picture is they're living the culture. They want the Harley culture. They're not quite there. You probably can't see her. But these guys right here got some interesting things going on. They're such hardcore guys that they like their keys organized on a retractable uh, keychain. And this guy's got his on a carabiner. He doesn't want to get too far from the office because he's got to have his phone. Their jeans are all clean. This guy's got a beer cozy. Okay. I, and, the, and the light beer sign in the background does not play to the hard, yeah. uh, hardly writer. I don't know if this is quite, you know, those those guys we saw a minute ago that hardly wanted, but this is kind of, you know, these guys are experiencing the brand. They probably go put their suit on during the week, but at least they get... And there's probably some of us in this room that do this. Yeah. Like, like, so many people here. So, I, you know... We're, we're only in good fun making fun of ourselves. Yeah. So, uh, so here's the reality. Yeah, so this is the loyalty, right? So they're so loyal that they're going to put this on their body permanently. Lots of people. You see the freedom message coming through with the Eagles? 
down here you've kind of got the harder side with, with the flames and the snakes and the tribal the stuff that makes you want to cry. So this is why Harley is the most loyal brand on the planet because you've got these kind of people. So not the only brand people want to put on their body. I'll show you some other examples. Nobody wants to tattoo this <laughs> hell. Oh wait, no, 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 you'll see. Yeah. So the frosty here, what, what do you think the experience had to be? <laughs> 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 Experience the brand, whatever brand this is, they experience it. This down here, this is a fail whale from Twitter. Twitter. <laughs> right? He loves Twitter. So their experience had to just oh. be so great that this one put on the body. IKEA. Yeah. <laughs> the lady berries are fantastic. No, no Cisco says so this guy's got to be upset because they changed their logo. <laughs> We've got the new logo though. We go to the next slide. Yeah, it's coming up. Oh, okay. And, and look, there's, there's a book publisher. Penguin? Penguin Press. And I think that Blackberry is how many generations ago? Ooh, old 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 Blackberry. Blackberry. And Popeyes. I love Popeyes. It's a waffle, man. <laughs> so Mario. Got... Mario Brothers. We're going to show you that people kind of get into the experience and they want to mark that on themselves. So they got a new Cisco logo right here. Very committed. This guy went across yeah, yeah, yeah. Someone likes Google a little too much. Yeah. So. All right. Sure. So. All right. So with that, we're going to go ahead and we're going to take some time. We're going to do uh, kind of an experiment here. There's another pins. Yeah, there's an intermission. There's, 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 there's pins uh, and paper, and we need you to work together at the table. So if you guys can right. group up with guys that are kind of like yeah, you two on one spot, uh, we need at least three, four would be off. You want to go to that company? You guys haven't fed you enough at the conference. Yeah, so So let me give you a little bit. This pot of orange, every flavor is different. Every single flavor is completely unique. And it's yours. Your job is to identify the flavor and identify the character. Do you want to elaborate a little more? Yeah, so. I think you guys can have this one. You you get the red guy. So we want you guys to kind of. So everyone has different flavors Dan said. We want you to taste it, feel it, look at the color. We want you to think about well-known characters and stories. And in a few minutes we're going to come back around and you need to tell us the story. Tell us what the character is, what their mode of transportation is, and what their environment is. Based on what you know of your popcorn. Sorry, one more time. Okay. Say yes. that again. One more time. time. Okay, very quiet. We're going to explain it one more time. I want to know the well known character, like Rusty, that represents your popcorn. Okay. It can be based on color, it can be based on the taste, it can be based on the, you know, the texture. I also want to know what mode of transportation they use, and I also want to know what their environment is like. Now, we want you to use your imaginations. It can be SpongeBob meets Quentin Tarantino if your, if your popcorn tastes that bad. But the idea is to come up with something that's creative, all right? Now, keep in mind, I'm going to take one away from you. There is a guy that did this before. He's an 80 year old guy who's since passed, he's now dead, and he's still selling popcorn. But we know he drove a station wagon and lived in an Iowa farm. So we don't want to hear Orville Red. No Orville Red so go ahead and think about it. Focus a little bit more on experience. So uh, you can't even see it. There's a sentence under there. This is just do it. Anyway, uh, how many how many have had Nike by show of hands? A pair of anything. That's a pretty overwhelming experience. So <coughs> Nike, do they make you run faster? Do they make you jump higher? Do they make you a better athlete? No. But <laughs> you bought them. But you bought them. So would another product work just as well? Better. Better? Okay. All right, but, but Nike is still one of the number one companies. And they're still going. Now, we can talk about our experiences all day, and we know that we keep buying Nike. However, Nike is also susceptible to bad experience. If something doesn't work right or fails on your product, your chances of going back and buying it again are completely gone. And this wasn't a stunt. This was a sign that fell off. 
This guy's not buying a Nike. <laughs> All right, so experience. So this guy had an experience at this restaurant. And what's nice about this is his experience, he decided to leave us a note about what he thought all the way up until he used a mustard to underline the size of some of the experience. So we're talking you know, Nike and then Ronnie and good experience, but we have the flip side, so you got to watch out for that. Um, and so we have our software equivalent of this. Just do that to talk about software. <laughs> so, whoa, oh, presentation over, but good thing we're on a Mac. And so we've got a good experience, so we can go ahead and put it past that. Um, so this one you guys get a lot. I like this guy, oh snap. It's like, so 404 errors on the web, excuse me, are kind of how we experience a lot of websites these days. And so this is the typical, you know, Windows Microsoft message. You know, this guy, this one here, they put a lot of work into aesthetics. Okay, they made it beautiful. These are beautiful 404 errors. But we're not talking about aesthetics here. <clears throat> we're talking about experience. So this guy has an amazing experience with this 404 screen. It says, hey, you know, based on what you were looking for, it might have been one of these things. He's doing some intelligent matching. You can also search the entire site, or he's suggesting that you check your spelling in your URL, and so forth and so on. Okay, so this wasn't just a requirement to have a page that shows up when the user types in the wrong URL. That's probably the, the feature that the developer got. Somebody spent the time to think about not just the requirement, and even the usability. They thought something more than that. They thought about the experience the person's going to have, the emotions they're going to have, the feelings they're going to get, the belief in the brand that they're going to have after they see this sort of a thing. Even if it is only a 404. Yeah. So here, usability designers have a tendency to focus on goals and tasks. They take a list, they walk down that list based on requirements, and they make something pretty. However, Experience designers focus on the story. They focus on the character. They focus on the user. Uh, this is this is critical. Yeah. So don't get us wrong. That sounded a little bad. Usability testing, usability design, all the effort around usability, which a lot of people are talking about in this building, is fantastic. And we spend a lot of time doing that as well. But usability isn't enough. Is what we're saying. You got to go further than that and think about the brand experience and make sure the story of the branding gets carried through into the design of your software. We're talking about how to do that. Okay, so this is Amazon. First glance, everybody visits here every day, but a few years ago, Amazon incorporated something that is the buy now one click patent. Yep. Now that completely changed things for Amazon. Their sales went way up just because they put in a button. That's it, a single button. And that button is the power because it, what is, is there, who's, who's used that button? Raise your hand. Okay, what does it do? Why is it right now? Buys it right now. You're done. How does that change your experience? Okay. So Amazon's brand is about getting product now. Right? What you want, when you want it right now. This is, I want it right now. So it goes to their story. It looks like a button, but there's something behind it. Nintendo. We use Nintendo. We've had experience. Who's used Nintendo? How is the usability of Nintendo? We used it. We satisfied ourselves by playing the game. It was good. A couple years ago, Nintendo changed the entire brand. They changed it from usable to an experience. Okay, with Wii, it wasn't just a new remote. They got you off the couch and they got you to experience their software by adding the remote. So experience is a tough, <laughs> a tough business. Okay? So you gotta be careful. These guys experience the brand a little bit, especially this. I feel bad for her. She's <laughs> got trouble, but. This, by the way, this is a broken finger. <laughs> they were up experiencing the brand. So the story of what Nintendo reinvented themselves as in this experiential branding, people got it. Most of the people didn't have this problem. <laughs> but some do. All right, this is Google. This is, a, this is a screenshot from 1998. There's something that just stands out right away with me, and that is beta. So beta has been Google's uh, calling card throughout the years. Everything they do, they release the beta. Now, that may not, beta, they didn't invent beta. I mean, beta's been around since the beginning of software, but the idea here is, is that beta, they release that to us to test, to everybody. And, and yeah, I know it takes time to get on their beta waiting lists and whatnot, but you end up on it, and you now have control over 
well, not in t complete control, but you have some control over the direction that, they, that they're trying to map out for us. And this is their story. We're making better products that you will use so that we can increase our revenue. <laughs> and they've done that. So who's familiar with 37 Signals and Basecamp? Okay, so as you guys probably know, their story, their, their entire brand is built on simplicity. Everything's simple, just enough, maybe not enough, one less than enough. <laughs> but it's all about the simplest possible thing. They have two books on the topic. Okay? So their interface here, it's simple. Okay? It was probably more difficult to build this interface, this simple, than it would have been to pull some library out of the you know, download and slap it on there and have it look like Office 97. <laughs> they intentionally built it with square tabs and no graphics because the story was important. They wanted to have the product embody the story. All right, so that leads us to what now? So this is kind of wrapping up here, so we're gonna kind of give you the, the quick rundown here. How many of here in this room have a company that has a guidelines book on brand? By show of hands. How many of those people have read it? Okay, not bad. Now, this is a good start. However, we want to illustrate that a branding book cannot capture all the dynamics that are in a brand. It doesn't, doesn't necessarily have a story or the experience that the person is supposed to have. A, a, yeah. a brand guideline book talks about the tangible items here. It talks about the symbols, it talks about the logos, it talks about the name usage and the colors, things there. not about the intent. Yeah. So this is a great place to start if anybody's wondering how to start putting together the experience. So next, the thing you gotta do, yeah, so what I want you to do, the first thing when you get back is I want you to go find the Ronald McDonald of your business, okay? Not the goofy redhead, but the Ronald McDonald who understands, some of you got that. The, the Ronald McDonald, this guy knows what the story is. He knows what the experience that they want the user of McDonald's to have when they come, okay? It's not just some goofy clown. It's about enhancing the experience of kids when they go to McDonald's. Okay? There's so many in business, sometimes it's the founder, but sometimes it's the marketing person, sometimes it's just a product manager, it doesn't matter. Someone understands the story and is passionate about the story of your product or your business. And if they don't, start throwing red flags. <laughs> if you can't find anybody, then maybe be that person. But I want you to go find them, and I want you to sit them down. You can't do this over email or chat or anything like that. You have to sit them down, and I want you to have a conversation with them and ask them about the brand. Talk about the feelings that should happen when people interact with you. Talk about these intangible things that we've covered today so that you can better understand what should happen when you're building the software or when you're testing the software or when you're specking out features for the software. Okay, once you understand that, then you can go back to your product and you can pimp your rack. Okay? These guys got the these guys got the experience right? I don't know if you can see this very well, but this is like a souped up. Alright, in the seventies. So next, everybody's familiar with this. This is uh, iPhone, but what we're focusing on is the pictures. There's probably a thousand other photo books across the world, and Apple took it and put it into a handheld, but they didn't just put a photo out where you can look at your pictures. And you see, and anybody that's used an iPhone, they changed the whole experience of using it. They, they made it so that it's working to the user specification instead of just a static image. Uh, the idea here is that they went above and beyond. They learned what their audience wanted, or not even wanted, but beyond what they wanted, and gave them what they never dared to ask for. They gave them a, a whole new way of doing it. And now, every other uh, application and every other uh, cell phone provider is trying to come up with things that do just this. And this is just one simple application that Apple used to do that. So, the other thing that the, uh, we need to point out here is you need to go and you need to find your brand experience, build your brand story, uh, so that we can push further. So I want to add one thing to that last slide. Go back there a second. Okay. The, after you understand the stories Dan said, when you're in your planning meetings and you're specking out your stories, okay, a lot of people put acceptance criteria on the back of their story cards and things like that. I want you guys to put the brand experience criteria on the back of that card. I want you to put down the emotions the person should have when they're using that feature in your software. Okay. So then as you go to the next step, everyone's doing usability testing these days. You hear a lot about that. And that tests how usable it is. But it doesn't test whether you're successfully achieving your brand experience. Okay, so 
now that you've established what those criteria should be, when you do your testing, I want you to also look at are the people who are using your software, using the software like you want them to do, but also experiencing what you want them to experience. Does that make sense? Uh, who's, who's been to Bruce Chris? Tell me about the stage. Um, it comes out very hot. Very hot, okay, good. Um, my experience actually was not good. I've only been there once. Okay. No, <laughs> so <laughs> <laughs> Bruce Chris in the back. I, I've been there actually once, but it was very excellent. Um, it's something where you kind of feel like you're special, if you will. Okay. And so you're special. That's an experience, right? Yeah. It's not, a, it's not a logo. It's not a marketing thing. This hot thing, that is their brand market differentiator. Yeah. Their steak comes out 1,800 degrees hot, and it's popping and sizzling all over the table when they put it down. And the person stands there and watches you cut into it to make sure it's perfect. Okay. So if I want to do brand experience testing, I can do that by looking at his face when they put that thing on the table. Okay. That's what you need to do when you're doing usefully testing for yourself. Now keep in mind, the steak, you can go get one at Chili's. Anybody can cook one at home. I mean, if we're talking about usability, all we're talking about is eating and getting full. Bruce Chris has turned it into an experience. So to wrap this up, the three things to become a, or for you to become the story. One, go back and take the inventory. Learn about your brand. Second, experience criteria. You gotta be able to write down what your clients are gonna need and beyond. Uh, and last, we need to test for your brand experience, not just usability testing. Everybody tests for usability and that's, that's all fine and good because that ensures the product, but we need to do experience testing, which is finding out if our users are actually enjoying the experience or if you've just force-fed them something that they may not have necessarily wanted, but it's the only game in town. And uh, with that, we can do, we got, we got short on time, so we go to the next speaker. Does anyone have a quick one or two questions, maybe? To answer your we question that I know you're gonna ask, which is flavors, these are the flavors of the popcorn. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, uh, we're going to need to talk to you after, but just real quickly, as far as illustrating those products, the, the best thing to think about is when you're building the software, you're building the experience. And so uh, I'm just going to throw out a really uh, quick uh, experience example here, but we had a client who had uh, I'm going to say five to ten screens, and each one of those he felt was re-emphasizing what he wanted to drive home and how he wanted it to be portrayed. He never put himself in the shoes of his character, and what we did is we went in and we were able to, again, pare it down and make it just three simple steps, and that helped his client or his character become a part of the story. But there wasn't really, um, I guess the best way to put it is, when you look at brand, there's two sides. You've got the product owner who wants to portray a message and wants to force that message, but at the same time, you've got to have the user who wants to hear it. And you need to be constantly worried about what they're thinking about you. I'm sorry, did that help? Yeah. All right. Anybody else? Okay. Right. Thank you. Thanks.